you. Finally awake. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Skyrim is a game where you try to leave the country, are mistaken as a fugitive, and are subsequently sent to die. But, even when you don't appear on the Empire's list, and they admit you shouldn't be there, you're still sent to the fucking block. Could you imagine if this happened in the real world? Alright, court is now in session. Yes, Mr. Toast, we've looked over all the evidence you've provided, Heard the testimonies from eyewitnesses, and even heard from your alibis. We even have CCTV footage of the actual man committing these 11,000 murders. But, you're here now, and it would be like a lot of work to find out the actual guy that did it. He's literally one of the jurors. Time, we're just gonna kill you instead and pretend it was you all along. Luckily, Daddy Dragon comes to save the day. Sentries, what do you see? It's in the cloud. Now this is a pretty good opening to a game. It sows the seeds of mistrust in the Empire, while also showing that they aren't all bad. It introduces the dragon in a powerful and jaw-dropping way, and this is elevated in VR. I just wish that for the love of God, they didn't start you moving with the player having no control. At least I still have control over my stomach. <laughs> VR is a genre that is still relatively new, and while there are some incredible games and experiences, often when playing or looking for a game to play, I wonder, would this game still be good if it wasn't in VR? Take The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, for example. I had a lot of fun playing that game in VR, but I don't think it's a title that would have been even remotely as good if you took away the VR element. The best part of that game was feeling like you really were in a zombie apocalypse. And I don't think it would feel that way if you just took it out of VR. So when playing games that are already fantastic games out of VR, there is some concern that they won't be as good. Perhaps they won't fit in. For example, I will use a game that I love, but didn't really like the VR version for very much. Payday 2. Now, Payday 2 is one of my favorite games. I've had a lot of fun playing with friends, solo, and with you guys while streaming. It's a fast-paced and exciting game, but when moved to VR, it felt slowed and disorienting. Now, this could just be my experience with it, and perhaps you've had a different experience and would like to say so otherwise in the comments section, which... I would appreciate to hear. But to me, it felt like Payday 2 lost something by becoming a VR title. And I was hopeful that the same wouldn't happen to Skyrim. Skyrim has come out on just about everything nowadays. All the next-gen consoles, you can even play it on an Alexa. Alexa, load Skyrim save. Loading save. You're being burnt to death by a dragon. Ah yes, tranquility. So, it should be no surprise that they released it to VR, which I must say, really helped bring this world to life. My favourite part about Skyrim, and what keeps bringing me back even to this day, is the exploration. Now when I play, I very rarely even touch the story. I exit the tutorial, pick a direction, and enter every location that I come across. This style of gameplay fits perfectly with a VR setting, and really lets you get lost and immersed in the world. For example, let's use the first cave many people come across in the game. When not in VR, I walk in, not an ounce of fear in me, declare that I am now their new benevolent leader, and, if they resist, give them a good fisting. Take this, you piece of shit! <laughs> but in VR, you can use the space given to you far better. You can press yourself up against the wall, you can peek around corners, and the threat of multiple muscly men charging at you all of a sudden seems a lot more terrifying. What I mean to say with all this is that encounters that now feel somewhat mundane with the game being almost 13 years old have become much better and brought back to life in a VR setting. And while I still know the outcome of many of them, Actually experiencing them and being there inside the world myself makes the overall journey feel completely new. There are a few things that I wish Bethesda had added to the game that didn't ship with it, and instead had to be modded in. For example, it goes a long way when playing VR to have mobile hands, especially if, like me, you have one of the VR headsets, an Index, or a Vive that allows you to move each finger individually. Being able to give someone the bird in VR just hits differently.
But being able to see something in the world and pick it up, look at it, and move it around like you would in real life really helps to add to the immersion. And, contrary to what Bethesda think, nighttime is actually dark. If they had their way, there'd be two suns, one for daytime and the other with a light blue filter over it for night. I mean, seriously, what were you thinking? The nighttime is so bright in this game that I could assemble and perfectly paint an entire Warhammer army. Sorry, I don't have any Warhammer to paint. I got denied a loan at the bank. Luckily, any gripes I had with the game have been easily fixed with mods. And I must say, the modding community around Bethesda games are incredible. With all these mods, the game becomes what it deserved to be in the first place. A complete masterpiece. So if you haven't already, go out, get yourself a copy, and give it a try. It's definitely one of the better VR titles that is currently available. Skyrim is a great game, and an even better game in VR. To all of you that are watching, uh, thank you so much for watching this video, and especially if you got this far, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. There's going to be more videos like this every week going forward.